Now that we've completed talking about the basics of laying out a dungeon, adding items and doors and monsters and a few basic connections and the stairs and levels and all that stuff, we're going to do a little bit more advanced and start to introduce some concepts of scripting. Uh, you can get away for a long time without using any scripts, but if you learn at least some of some basics, how they work, then you can modify some of the scripts that you can find on the forums or elsewhere and suit them to your needs. They also give a lot of flexibility of how you want to do things. Uh, so one thing I want to do to illustrate a simple script, I'm going to do something without scripts and then I'm going to do it with scripts. So you can just see an alternative method. There's usually more than one way to do things. So I'm just going to make uh, another little room and we'll have a doorway that we want to open because that's what we always want to do, isn't it? Open a door with some sort of trick. So <laughs> we'll put this metal door there. We'll, we'll put the party there and uh, just update it. And here we are in this room. What we're going to do is put a couple of torch holders and we're going to make it so somebody has to put torches in both of them in order to open the door. Pretty straightforward puzzle that you've seen in the original Grimrock game and elsewhere, but it helps to know how to do it. We have two torches and we have a door. So what do we do? Just link the torches to the door? No. If you did that, then either one would open the door. But we want the door only to open if both torches are connected to it. The simple way to do that without using a script is to have a counter and we'll put the counter nearby and we'll set it to two and I'm going to call it door counter well I'll call it torch counter this torch holder we're not going to put torches in them because we want people to put the torch in them to activate it so we'll leave the torch out we'll connect it to the counter we'll select this one and connect it to the counter and of course we want it to be decrement and I forgot on the other one so we want it to reduce the counter and then the counter when it gets to zero we want it to open that door so let's uh, do that right now uh, let's go over here we'll put this torch in that holder and then we take it off and put it in again and it opened the door well that's not cool we want to require that both torch holders get filled we need to link them in a different way we have it on activate when the torch holder activates it decrements the counter we also want it to we add another connector to the counter and we want if you take out the torch that you just put in we want it to increment the counter so that way if they take the torch back out it puts the counter back up to two and then our little trick here of putting a torch in out in out in out in out it doesn't work because it keeps on reducing the number but then adding it to it again therefore people can't cheat so we have to do the same thing here add another connection with uh, when we deactivate the torch holder then that will increment the counter now you have to put a torch in either side and we only have one torch with us so I guess we better add another torch to the room here available for you to get okay so we'll put one torch over there and then we'll go pick up the other torch that I put and put it there and now the door opens and we can take the torch back out it doesn't matter because we set the door to open permanently what we could do is with the counter selected we could have it be any and toggle therefore when the torches are in and it opens the door if you take a torch out then the door will close again they both have to stay in you know if you take them both out and you switch them where'd that torch go there it is so if you switch it over here that's fine so the counter keeps track of whether the torches have gone in or out and you have to leave the torches there because it's toggling the door so it just depends on wh on whether you want the door to open permanently or how you want the torches to work but that's the way we did it with a counter. So I'm going to illustrate now doing it with a script. 
we're going to toggle this script with the torches so we don't need the counter. So with the counter selected, I'm just going to delete it. Now we need to clean up with the torches selected. Now these connections to the counter are broken, so I'll remove them. I'll select the other torch and remove those connections. Now it's back to the way it was. Uh, the door is just sitting there. So we're going to add a script item, script entity. It's a little LUA. That's the script language, the programming language, Lua. When we select it, we can name it. So I'm going to call it torch script. Then when I click down here, this is a place to type, to type the code for the script. If we type two hyphens, then we can put anything we want just as a note to us and it won't read that line. If we leave off the hyphens then it will be the actual code. So we're going to create a function and just kind of follow along. We'll call it open our door and you can type whatever you want there. And let's put those two little parentheses. And then it's nice to do an indent just to keep the right pattern to your code. Before we finish that we need to name these torch holders something nicer. So we're going to say torch holder left and torch holder right. This is just for us to remember those names better when we're typing in the function. So here we go. If torch holder left colon has torch, we can say equals true and torch holder right has torch equals true then what was that door called uh, let's name it something torch door then torch door colon open else torch door close end end so this end is ending the if if this and this else this and we end that section and then the function has its end here. So that's it. Open our door function is what we created. The way that works is if the left torch holder has a torch and the right torch holder has a torch, then open the door. But if that's ever not true, then close that door. That's set. So we need to just link the torch holders to that function, to that script. So we add a connection to the script and the action is the open our door function, which we created and we named it open our door and we we want to just do that script whenever we activate or deactivate the torch so on any we put the torch on any if we only put it on activate then it would only check to see whether the torches are in there when we put a torch in the torch holder we also want it to check when we take the torch out that way it will have a chance to shut the door if it needs to so we're going to put it on any and we need to link the other torch add a connector to the script with any and let's play. Okay, let's put a torch here. We'll try it lots of times. It doesn't matter. And let's put the other torch on this side. And it opens the door. And if we take the torch out, it closes the door. So every time you put a torch in and out, in and out, it runs the script. And it checks whether both torch holders have a torch. I put it in, it checks, they both do. I take it out, it checks, and they don't both have the torch, only one of them. So it works the same as when we had that counter. The counter is definitely easier to do in this case, but once you start to understand how this script works, then you have more options and more ways that you can customize it than you do with just a counter. So it's good to practice doing things both ways with counters and timers and things and practice doing them with scripts when you find the examples and tutorials on how to use scripts. Just so you can get a feel for some of this uh, syntax and formatting of the scripts and how things work. Now one little clue here is when you have something like this you don't have to do the equals true. That's just the default. So I could delete those equals true. It just assumes that if this is the case so if torch holder has a torch, yeah, and torch holder has a torch, yeah. You could do something backwards logic if that equals false, you know, if you're wanting to check to make sure it doesn't. So you check whether it does and whether that's false, and you want them to both be empty, then you could do it that way. In fact, let's just try that. 
So we want them to both be false, and that's the only time the door will open. Well, the only way for that to make sense is if they start with torches. So let's try it. They both have torches. I take that torch out, and I take that torch out. Yeah, that's what opens the door. They have to both be empty. I put one back in, and now they're not both empty. Oh, got to make them empty. So you can set it up either way you want. So with the script, you would have to put the false in, but if you're trying to check whether they're true, then you can just leave it like that. And then it works. So you don't always have to put equals true. Also for open, you can put activate. Doors open and close, uh, deactivate. Not everything else opens and closes. Most things activate and deactivate. So that can be an easier way to remember how to keep things straight. So we changed the activate and deactivate and we left off the true and it still works. So that shows you a little bit of the flexibility of scripts just by some of the different um, wording. And you can, of course, name the function whatever you want. Uh, the torch holder left and the torch holder right. That's what we named these things here with the ID that helped us remember what they were. Otherwise, it's going to have torch underscore holder underscore 11 or whatever it is, and it's hard to remember that stuff. So giving names to things helps you keep it straight. And then the torch door is that door, and we have the torch door open and shut. So that's your first pretty simple script. It's not too bad. And I'm just going to add something to the script to illustrate for you, and that is to play a sound. So when we activate or open that door, at the same time, we're also going to play a sound. And it's just play sound and the name of the sound. Oh, there's a D. And you can find a list of all the sounds, but uh, we'll make it play the sound for when you found a secret. And it will uh, you know, make the player feel all special when they open that door. So if they, if they have both torches in there, then it's going to open the door and play a sound. They, these two things. One, two. Otherwise, it's going to close the door. Now, the way we have it set up is every time it opens the door, it's going to play the sound. So you might want to do things a little differently so it only plays it once. Or you might want to have this be a door that, that only opens one time permanently. But anyway, this is a way to you add a sound. It's very, very simple. So if we just test it uh, right now, I don't know if you can hear the sounds in the game, but anyway, when I do that, it would say, da -da, secret sound would play, and it makes it more fun to open that door. Let's add something else that happens when you open the door. Let's have an on-screen message that actually has the name of your first player within the message. When you want to put something on the screen, you say HUD print with a capital P, and then in quotes, you type your message. So I'm going to say, you know, and we're going to have the name of the player who is in the, the first position show up. Name one, dot, dot. You are an incredibly effective adventurer. Ta da And that's it. Uh, when the door opens, that's going to show up on the screen. And that's, you know, Contar Stone Skull. So, uh... Oops, I'm on the other side. So I pressed Z to open that. I pressed Z to close it again. Okay. Let's go put the torch in here and put this other torch in here. Oh, I messed up the script. There's a crash for you. And what it does is it underlines the problem so that you can find the problem. So it's, it does a little explanation of what's wrong and gives you a clue on how to solve it. It says uh, this global name has got a nil value. So sometimes you don't know what on earth is that talking about. Uh, after you get some more experience, you come to start to recognize what some of these things are talking about. And what it is is I forgot to define name one and make it a local thing instead of a global thing. So we need to do that here in the script. So we're just going to put local. That means we're going to create a local variable right now in this situation name one equals the party get champion one get name now that's some scripting that you can find in the scripting reference and find out some more details of this get champion and and what kind of things you can do with this party colon but just trust me this is how you get their name 
and that becomes what name one is. And then when I print this message, it plugs in name one that I just defined into the message. So that's what I forgot to do. Okay, let's try these torches and open the door again. Ta-da! You know, Contour Stone Skull, you are in an incredibly effective adventurer. In, oops, that's a typo. You are an incredibly effective type adventurer. Okay, so that's it. Now, anytime you're working, you might come up here and save your project. You, I recommend you do that often because when we had that little crash back to the editor and it gave us the error, it could have been a bad crash and actually crashed the editor and we'd have lost all our work and shame on me for not saving it earlier and setting a good example. So just be careful and save often so you don't lose your work.